Okay, 30 minutes, light fed cardio. I think I'm ready. Now it's day two, we're gonna do fasted cardio. I've got my heart rate monitor on and I'm ready to go. makes a difference in terms of fat loss. I've heard this everywhere, online, uh, people talking about it in the gym. Because people talked about it in the gym, I even tried it myself in the past. So I wanted to look at what the science, you know, cut through. What does the science really say about whether or not you can lose more fat with fasted cardio? I just want to know. By the way, I'm not talking about intermittent fasting. I'm also not talking about improvements in performance. And I just want to look at it in terms of an overnight fast. So whether or not you have your breakfast before your cardio, or you have your breakfast after your cardio. So if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video with your friends, and we'll get straight into it. Okay, so what is the claim? The claim is that if you do fasted cardio, you're gonna be using more fat for energy rather than carbohydrates. So over the long term, if you control for everything else, like the intensity of your workouts, the amount of calories you're eating, then you'll lose fat more effectively. So I was looking online to see where these claims were coming from and there were two main mechanisms. So the first is down to lower insulin levels in a fasted state and the second comes from lower glycogen levels because your muscle glycogen levels will deplete overnight. You have less carbs to fuel your body therefore your body will turn to fat for energy utilization. So the first mechanism was that you have lower insulin levels in a fasted state. So let's look at how our bodies use fat for energy. There are two stages of burning fat essentially. So the first is lipolysis. Lipolysis happens in your adipocytes which are your fat cells. So in your fat cells we store fat in the form of triglycerides. The triglycerides are three fatty acids combined with a glycerol molecule. So the first process of breaking down fats is to first break down this big molecule. You break down the triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol and those free fatty acids go into the bloodstream. They go into the bloodstream and that leads to the second step of burning fat, which is fat oxidation. Fat oxidation happens when those free fatty acids get taken up by metabolizing cells. So any cell that needs energy basically, like muscle cells, and they take up free fatty acids and they convert them to energy. So that is the process of actually burning fat, converting fat into energy. So how could insulin affect that? Well, insulin inhibits the process of lipolysis, the breakdown of triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol, which means that you have less free fatty acids in your bloodstream to use for energy, for fat oxidation. When we eat, our insulin levels go up and we'll be using carbohydrates instead. Looking at lots of papers, that seems to be true. So they would say that if you have a meal before your cardio session, you'll be using carbohydrates for fuel rather than fat. So this underlying mechanism is supported by a lot of research. And what those studies show is that fat oxidation is higher for people who are fasted during their cardio workout compared to those who are fed during their cardio workout. So for the fasted group, that means that their bodies are relying more on fat for energy during their workouts. But I think that's where that idea comes from, that fasted cardio is better for fat loss compared to fed cardio. As always in science, there's always like papers that contradict the general consensus. So in, there were a couple of studies that suggested that fat oxidation during a fasted cardio session 
wasn't higher compared to someone who, was ha who had a fed cardio session. So that mechanism has been challenged a little bit, so that would imply that there was no difference between fasted or fed cardio in terms of fat loss. I wasn't like fully convinced with the protocols of those tests, but at the moment the evidence does point towards a higher fat oxidation during the workout of someone who's in a fasted state. So that kind of covers the first like claimed mechanism to do with lower insulin levels. The second that I mentioned before was about the lowered muscle glycogen, but then I found a paper that said that actually if you had like long periods periods of rest, during sleep, between meals, where you weren't really using your muscles, then your muscle glycogen levels won't deplete. So that means that if you were having like a fully inclusive diet with carbohydrates, proteins and fats, that your glycogen levels shouldn't really deplete overnight. Therefore, when you wake up in the morning, even if you don't eat, your body will then turn to those glycogen stores to fuel your workout rather than go to your fat stores. So based on those two mechanisms, it looks like there's more support for the first one. So let's look into more of that. Let's look at what the papers say. So when looking at the findings, I will say that it is important to look at fat oxidation over a longer period of time. We can't just take a snapshot of just during training because our bodies are more than just a training session. It's important to look at things long term rather than just what happens during a training session. So looking back at the insulin mechanism, that argument does really focus on your fat oxidation during that workout, like specifically during the workout. So let's look at some of the mechanisms that might come into play post fasted cardio. So Paolo et al. did a study and looked at the effects of fat oxidation after the cardio workout. And what they found was that fat oxidation was higher in individuals that did fed cardio compared to those that did fasted cardio. And they did that using the respiratory exchange ratio. So that's just a fancy way of saying the ratio between the oxygen consumed versus the carbon dioxide produced. And if you have a one-to-one -one ratio, that indicates that you're using more carbohydrates as your fuel and if you have a ratio that is less than that so close to 0.7 then you're using predominantly fat for fuel but this allows you to just look at what the proportions are so whether you're using more carbs for fuel or whether you're using more fats for fuel so even though fat oxidation seems to be higher during a fasted cardio session compared to a fed cardio session if we look at post-workout the reverse seems to be true there's also a paper that suggests that epoc which is your excess post exercise oxygen consumption which is the excess amount of oxygen that you use for your body to return back to a fully recovered state goes up after fed cardio compared to fasted cardio those two mechanisms so epoc and fat oxidation post cardio workout could actually be offsetting the initial mechanism that we saw which was higher fat oxidation during a workout for fasted groups so now we've looked at the mechanisms that might be at play, now let's look at any kind of long-term, I say long-term because it's not that long-term, studies that look to see whether the effect of fasted cardio has any additional benefits to fat loss compared to fed cardio. Now what I will say is that the quality of these studies aren't that high. There's small sample sizes, the subjects they use aren't necessarily representative of the general population, the cardio isn't necessarily representative of all the different types of intensities of cardio, and just generally there's just quite a low volume of studies in this area. There's two main studies that seem to be the most reliable in terms of design protocol. The first one is by Schoenfeld et al. He looked at 20 subjects over four weeks to see whether low intensity cardio, fed or fasted, had any differences in fat loss. And the second paper is by Gillen et al. and they looked at high intensity cardio um, over six weeks to see whether doing it fasted or fed resulted in any differences in fat loss. In both cases, neither studies showed that there was any significant difference in fat mass between the two groups. Both groups did lose fat, but whether or not they did it in a fasted or fed state didn't show any statistically significant differences. And this is in line with a broader systematic review by Hackett et al. He basically looked at all of the research literature in this area, so fed versus fasted cardio, and he concluded that none of the research points towards fasted cardio being better for fat loss than fed cardio. In all cases, when they compared the two groups, there was no difference 
in fat loss. It just appears that you're gonna lose fat at the same rate over the long term. Even though the studies that suggest there's no significant difference between doing fed or fasted cardio aren't like necessarily the best quality, it's really important to note that there is very limited, if not any, studies that suggest that it is beneficial to do cardio fasted rather than fed. But there are still lots of claims. So there are claims that it could break down muscle, um, but it's really important to look at whatever they're saying and be like, hang on a sec. I ain't seen no clinical trials based on what you're saying. So always take things with a pinch of salt. Be wary of anyone saying that, oh, this works for me, therefore it's gonna work for you. It's really hard to imply strict controls on ourselves. There's a huge placebo effect. It's also really hard to know whether maybe we were actually decreasing our calories and any losses in fat were due to lower energy input. Like there's loads of things like that that aren't always due to just one thing, especially when we're just saying it works for ourselves. So make sure that whatever kind of principle you take is always grounded in clinical studies, scientific research. Make sure people are open about that and try and take everything with a pinch of salt. In terms of what I would suggest, I didn't actually see any papers that said that it was dangerous to do fasted cardio. So because of that, then it just kind of comes down to personal preference. If I don't eat straight away, I just feel sick. I don't like it, okay? I need some food. But if you're the other way around and you find that you feel sick if you've eaten before you train, then don't eat before you train. Just go by how you feel. For me, exercise should always be enjoyed. I also take the view of being efficient when I train. So if I don't have enough energy, I can't put out my maximum, I have no output and I don't enjoy it. So personal preference, I'm always gonna eat. But if you're the other way around, then do it the other way around. But don't go putting yourself through fasted cardio if you don't like it because you think you're gonna get better fat loss results because from the science, there's no evidence that it gives any better fat loss results. So yeah, that's my conclusion. Okay, so that's my 30 minutes up fed cardio. Um, I feel good, I ran 3.5 kilometers, I burnt 262 calories. Yeah, I felt like any other time when I would have run the same run. So yeah, I wasn't too drained. We'll just see how I fare tomorrow. All right, so my 30 minutes fasted cardio is up. I feel absolutely drained, um, but I kept my intensity the same. I ran for the same amount of time. My heart rate was kind of the same. I burned the same amount of calories. Interestingly though, I finished here instead of up there, which is where I finished yesterday. But yeah, like I said in the science, it just, depends how you feel. If you feel like you train better when you're fed, which is me, then um, just keep training when you're fed. The science doesn't really show that you burn any more or less fat. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please give me a big thumbs up if you did. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. Share it with your friends if you feel like they might be doing fasted cardio for the wrong reasons. And I love you guys. Okay, bye.